Hello, my name is Ma, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to debug C++ WSL projects on Visual Studio Code. Before we start, I just want to ask you guys to please visit my website and check out the articles that I've got in there. I've got quite a few articles about software development in general, so you might like one or two of them. It would help me out quite a lot. Now let's get into it. And I'm going to try and do this uh, fairly quickly, uh, straight to the point, so that you guys can just get on with your actual work. All right. So first of all, if you're using Visual Studio Code and WSL to develop C++ applications, which is my case here, you might need to install a few different uh, tools in your WSL uh, Linux distribution. In my case, I've got Ubuntu here, but the tools that you have to install are the following. You have to install a compiler, so GCC and G++. You have to install a debugger. You have to install uh, CMake as well as Make. Okay. For the most part, if you're using uh, the Ubuntu distribution, you're going to have to type these uh, following commands here. Build Essential includes the compiler, so GCC and C++. So this command would install it. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it, but it would ask for your password and then it would install it for you. Likewise, you're also going to install the corresponding debugger for G++, which is um, GDB. Okay. And this may not be included in Build Essential. If I'm not mistaken, in, in, in the particular WSL distribution, it's, it's actually not included. You have to install it separately. You have to also install Make like this. And then you also have to install CMake. And once you've done all of that, you have everything on the WSL side to debug your projects. Okay. Now going over to VS Code, right? And you can open VS Code from Windows like that. You're going to also have to install a few different extensions, but I'm not going to take too much time talking about them. And those extensions are obviously um, C and C++ here, and then C++, C and C++ extension pack. You're going to need uh, the CMake tools extension by Microsoft. And obviously you're also going to need the remote WSL extension here. Okay. As long as you install all of these extensions in the WSL, in your Visual Studio code, uh, you should be good to go. And uh, you've, you've noticed that I've actually opened VS code and it's got a directory already open here for me, but you can also open VS code from WSL like, like so. So if you navigate into your desired uh, project directory where your main CMake list is, you can just type in code dot and VS code would open with that directory as your workspace. Okay. And you can see here that this is a project that I've got. It's actually a dummy project that I've made for a previous project on my website. It's actually about integrating uh, Google tests into your CMake C++ project. So if you want to get a code for this tutorial, please check the link in the description. Uh, you also learn how to use uh, Google tests. So just to give you guys a context, this project has one library defined with CMake uh, called multiply. And this library has only three functions, uh, which are all called multiply with different uh, argument types here. It mul simply multiplies two numbers. And there's also a test directory where I define an executable with CMake. Uh, which comprises of this multiply dot multiply underscore test dot cpp and this is simply just the the, uh, the google tests file with all the the unit tests for my multiply functions as you can see here so the first thing you've got to make sure you can do is to configure and build this with cmake and if you've installed the cmake extensions once you uh, press Control shift p and type in cmake you should get all of these options here okay the first thing you're going to do is select a kit and this is where you select your compiler in your WSL distribution. In our case, I've got quite a few different ones here, including Clang here. But for this tutorial, we're, I've asked you to install GCC. So you're going to select GCC under user bin GCC or something similar. Okay. Once you select that, then CMake should finally be able to configure your project. And again, you can do that with Control Shift P and then CMake configure. And if it all goes well, you're going to see this message here, build files have been written to whatever that dash build. And by default, Visual Studio puts all your build files, all your CMake files under uh, your project root um, forward slash build. Okay, so here's where everything is. And then once you've configured, you can also compile it, the same thing, CMake build. And if everything goes well, you should see this build finish with Xcode zero. And this is where CMake actually goes on to create all the library files and all of the executable files um, that you've defined with CMake. So if you go under your build directory, uh, by default, it will replicate the structure here. So wherever I created the CMake executable for my tests, which is under tests, you'll be under build tests and there'll be, you know, multiply test, which is the executable for, for Linux, uh, where all of my tests are located, my G tests. All right. So our goal is to essentially tell Visual Studio to run this test in a debug environment. In other words, you will run the executable, but you can also, you know, step into the code, 
you can put breakpoints, look at value of variables, and etc. Okay, and this is actually very easy to do in VS Code. All you have to do is to essentially click on this button here. There's a run and debug um, button on the UI. Uh, at the start, you're not going to have anything here. All you're going to have is the option to create a launch.json file. And this launch.json file is essentially a JSON file with all the debug configurations that you're going to have uh, in a drop down button here, and you'll see in a bit. So, this is essentially going to contain information about how you want to debug a particular application, a uh, particular C application. Okay. And if you've installed all of the uh, C uh, extension tools here in Visual Studio Code, once you click on this button, add configuration, you should see these options here, C, C++. And the one we're going to be doing today is launch. All right. And this launch mode is essentially going to tell Visual Studio to start a new application in debug mode with the uh, debugger attached to it. There is another method here called attach, and this is for uh, debugging processes or, or programs that are already running on your on your machine that you can attach uh, to. So for example, if you're creating a DLL or a library that's uh, being called from, from a, a process in your computer, you probably use attach, but this is a bit too advanced and we're not gonna explain this today. So let's click on launch and you can see that automatically creates, you know, the, the whole JSON file here. And we have a bunch of options here already pre-populated for you. Uh, what we're actually gonna do is I'm unfortunately gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna delete everything and we're only gonna keep the ones that we actually care about, all right? And, you know, in this configurations uh, JSON array, you're gonna put all of your debug configurations and in general, you're gonna have a different configuration for, you know, uh, every different program that you have, every different executable that you generate, or you can have multiple configurations with different arguments, for example, to test a particular exe. But we're gonna do just one here and you should be able to go from there, okay? So one of the first things that you need to add here is this um, type name, this option name. And this is essentially just the name that's gonna appear on the UI up here. Okay, so let's call it debug uh, gtest for us. The next option you're gonna add is the type. This one here has to be uh, one of the available options that you get. So again, if you've installed the C++ extensions on Visual Studio Code, you should be able to see CPP debug, and that's what we're gonna do here. Next up is the request type. And this, as I said, we're going to use launch today. There are, there are two options here, launch and attach. And I've already explained what each are. Next up, we're going to define the, cost, the current working directory for the uh, the debug. This is the directory uh, in which the application of debugging will run from at debug time. Okay. So a good default here, in my opinion, is the file um, their name here. So I believe this defaults. This is the value of the uh, directory for the executable that you're going to be debugging. Okay. Now, next up is a very important one. It's a bit of a weird name here, but it's called a uh, me debugger path. And this is essentially the path to your debugger in WSL. Okay. Now, if you've installed GDB properly, you should just be able to put GDB here. Okay. And if when we actually run the debugging session, as you can see in a bit, you get an error saying that the me debugger path is invalid, that probably means that you haven't actually installed GDB in your WSL, okay? Or the equivalent um, debugger you're using for your compiler. For example, you know, Clang has a different one. You have to use the one that matches that, all right? And there are, you know, way more uh, variables that you can add here. You, you can actually, you know, if you start typing an option here, you can see all of them. And VS Code is actually very good at giving you the documentation for each one. And if you hover over, you know, one of them here, there's there's going to be a, a little um, arrow here and, and you can see the documentation for it. So, for example, there is args here. And if you look at it, it's actually, you know, a set of command line arguments that will be passed to your program at debug time. And this can be very useful. OK, so maybe we'll, we'll play around with that. But let's just do that. Uh, OK, and the final one um, before we actually go into <laughs> into debugging that we forgot is the uh, the program that you want to debug. And this has to be the path in your WSL setup where your executable is located, okay? And as I hinted before, we're gonna debug this uh, multiply test executable. And as you guys can see, that is under build, tests, and then multiply test, okay? So let's just do that. Uh, it by default adds this, and workspace root is a good starting point because this takes you to your project root. After that, we can do build, tests, and then multiply, Best, all right and this is essentially everything that we absolutely need um, to debug our program so if again you go into the uh, run and debug here you can start pressing you can press that button and oh there's actually an error here uh i misspelled current working directory silly me uh, but if you run it now it should definitely work and you can see that my program ran and ex exited with code zero now it obviously didn't stop anywhere because i don't have any breakpoints in my code 
But for example, if I went to the uh, the test file and I wanted to debug one particular unit test that I've written, for example, the first one here, I could add a breakpoint here and then run my debug test. And because the executable is essentially comprised of this file, you know, whenever it hits that line of code, it will be here. And then I can, you know, step over, I can step into functions. I can do all of the debugging things that you're probably used to. I can look at variable values and etc. So this is a very neat way of uh, debugging with VS Code in a very easy way, okay? And that's essentially it. I mean, uh, you can also, as I, as I mentioned before, you can put uh, extra command line arguments uh, with uh, the variable args. And because my executable is actually a Google test, I can filter out the tests and run only a test that I want. So for example, um, let's pour this one here. Let's just run one of the tests, uh, maybe this one. So this setup is actually going to pass in this argument to my executable and it should if it works fine uh, only run this test here and this is what it means in google test i'm just showing to you guys that it does work indeed okay so you can see the program run with no problems and it didn't hit my breakpoint which was on the first test and the reason why is because only this test run because my um, arguments here were passed on correctly and you can also add things like environment variables uh, for example let's say you don't want to run with the colors here there's an easy um Easy way to do that with um, with environment with setting environment variables for Google tests. I think the variable is actually called environment, and it has to be in this particular format. You've got the name here, and then you've got the value for the variable. If I put zero here, you should see that that will will disappear, implying that the environment set the environment variable was set up for this particular uh, debug session. Okay, so let's run that, and you can see that the color disappeared. Okay. So this is essentially it. I mean, there are way more options you can look at. Uh, obviously, you can look at the VS Code website and look at all the documentation for the different options that you can have. Or you can simply just start typing the option out and read the documentation in VS Code itself. It's actually very good. That's what I would recommend doing because it's a bit easier. Um, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it helps you out quite a lot. And just one more time, please visit my website. Um, if you like this tutorial, chances are you're going to like um, other articles that I've got here. Uh, if you've got any questions or any feedback, please comment in the uh, in the comment section below. And that's it. Thank you. Bye bye.